Now the second method, method of shells. So we're going to leave that as an open question. We'll come back to it. I just wanted to show you, like, there are problems where it's not easy to just flip it and make your rectangle go horizontal. So let's see if there's another way. So method of shells. Now this method, you use this when the rectangle is parallel to the axis of rotation. Which in this case, that would be what's happening in B, right? If, if we were trying to wrap that sine curve around the y-axis like this, we're trying to go this way, and our rectangle is like that, then our rectangle is actually parallel to our axis of rotation as opposed to being perpendicular. So if we want to try and do this, we're going to have to use this method of shells. All right, so here's the method of shells. And we're going to, we're going to set up, we're going to create the formula. We start off the way we started before with a general picture. Here's f of x. And then g of x is some curve below it, right? They hit each other at A and at B, right? I would like to wrap this around the y-axis. But I need to keep my rectangle vertical. Now, as I do this, I want to remind you of something. Remember what I told you the distance from here to the rectangle always is? From here to here is what? X, X right? That's what X is. And X is going to vary between A and B, right? All right. If I take that rectangle and I wrap that rectangle as, as it sits, if I wrap it around the x-axis, I get this shape. We call this shape a shell. Now, I know that you could argue that that's a washer. I mean, it kind of is, right? A washer is basically a cylinder with a hole in the middle, right? It's just washers are usually flat, right? You could argue that this is a really tall washer, but we call it a shell. Now, let's figure out if, well, let's determine if we can uh, figure out the geometry of this thing. Ultimately, what I want to do is find the volume of that one piece, right? I want the volume of that, the volume of that slice. Just like before when we were doing it, this one right here, when we wrapped it around the x-axis, we wanted the volume of one of these, right? And then we're going to add them all up. So I want to wrap this one rectangle around the y-axis, create the shell, and then find the volume of that one shell, and then add them all up with the integral. So to find the volume of this, we're just going to be kind of cute, all right? We're going to come in here with some scissors, and we're going to cut this thing open. Right? So if you have a shell, right? Right? And you cut it open, lay it flat, you're going to get this. Now remember, this shell is infinitesimally thin, right? This thickness of this rectangle is our dx, right? The thickness is dx. So I know already that from here to here, right, that right there is dx, right, that. And we want the volume of that one piece, right? So volume is length times width times height. Do you know how tall it is? Hmm, that's this, right, which is, is that, right? It's that, but what's that? It's the f of x function minus the g of x function, right? It's the difference of those two functions. So that right there is the, is it okay if I write this top minus bottom or do you want me to do f of x minus g of x? I don't care. Let me do f of x minus g of x. I'll do that first. This is the f of x minus g of x. That's the height of this rectangle. That's how tall it is, right? 
how long is this thing? What the hell's wrong with this paper? Okay, all right, there's my shell, right? I cut it open, I laid it open like this. We want to know the distance from here to here. It's the circumference, isn't it? The circumference of this circle. Circumference, by definition, is 2 pi, 2 pi r, right? 2 pi times the radius. Do you know the radius of this thing? Do we know the distance from here to, remember it's infinitesimal, so just look at this as just being a thin sheet. What's that R? Well, this is our axis of rotation, isn't it? Wouldn't that be the distance from the axis of rotation to the rectangle? Yes. Which is what in our picture? Yes. Nope, the distance from the axis of rotation to the rectangle. Oh, it's X, right? X is going to vary. But once you fix an X, that's your radius, right? You create your shell. As you wrap that around, that's the radius of your shell. Yeah? yeah? So this side right here should be 2 pi times the radius, but the radius for us is X. Right? This right here, radius, is X. So the volume of this slice would be length times width times height. So I'm going to write it this way. I'm going to go this one, 2 pi x times, I'm going to do the height, f of x minus g of x times the, the width over here, the thickness, dx. I did length times height times width is what I did. But it's all three sides multiplied together, right? That is the formula for the volume of one slice, yes. This was my cut. This is when I came with my scissors. That's the the yep, that's this axis right here. And this shell came around like this, right? And so the distance from here to that right there is x. Yes? This is 7.3. I do them all together. I do them all together. This is actually 7.3 in the book. Yeah, so this is, this is the picture in your notes. Remember I said there's notes that you can go online and get these. This is basically me setting up this same picture here. Now, I'm going to have a general formula here, all right, but I'll, I'll explain that formula in a moment. This is where we are right now, okay? This is the volume of one slice, right? Now, we want to add them all up, so we're going to use the integral. So for us, the volume of this thing wrapped around the wrapped around the y-axis should be, the, so the total volume should be, I want to keep that there. What should the volume, um, can I erase this now? No, I won't erase that. I'll just, I'll squeeze it in right here. The volume of this thing, the whole thing wrapped around the y-axis should be, all right, can any constants come out of there? 2 pi, so 2 pi integral, well, a to b, right? a to b, and then everything else, right, is just, well, x, and then f of x minus g of x, no, no squared on that, right? And then just dx, that's it. That's your, that is your formula for a shell around the y-axis. Any questions? That's pretty cool, right? I mean, do you all understand the integral is a tool. It's a way for us to add things up. What we add up is kind of up to us. So depending on what we're trying to achieve, it, like here, if we're trying to find this volume, if there is a way that we can somehow break this idea down into just adding up a bunch of things, then we can use the integral to do it for us. Very powerful tool. Um, all right, so I'm wondering, should we answer B now? I think we can answer part B now. Let's do this. We had sine x, we wanted to go around the y-axis, right? So we have uh, 0 to pi here, right? This was 0 to pi. We know the top of this rectangle was oh, 
that was our, our f of x, right? That for us was y equals sine x. And the bottom of this was y equals zero. So that's, that's your f of x and your g of x, right? Your top function and bottom function. And then you have your interval, right? So that'll give us our a and our b. So we just put two pi, and we're going to go from where to where? Zero to pi, then x, right? And then which is for us? Just so is it still outer minus inner? What's that? Is it still outer minus inner? Nope, there's no outer minus inner. It's the f function minus the g function. That's all it is. Or you can look at it as the top function minus the bottom one. Oh, there it is. Okay, okay something like that. So what is it? So the volume of this should be 2 pi integral 0 to pi, and then you said what, x, and then times sine just sine x minus 0, which is just sine x, dx. Boom, that's it. Could you integrate this? Integration by parts, right? So you could do that if you needed to. Not going to, but you could. Interesting. How are we doing? I want to do more shells, but you know what? Because I know what the homework's going to be for 7.2, we, we are not going to, I'm going to continue this next time. I want to do one example. Okay, I want to do one example before we leave today. I just want to ask again, yes. What is the condition for shells is when you're trying to get, when you can't rotate it against the y-axis? It's when, it's when your region, like here, my region is lending itself to vertical rectangles because it would be hard to do a horizontal because it's hard to re rewrite this function as, right, like, no matter how, if I rotate, the bottom, or the right and the left will always be the same curve. So I'm not gonna be able to rotate it. So I'm forced to use vertical rectangles and I'm being asked to rotate here. They're parallel, I've gotta use, uh, sorry, shells. Yes. All right. So we'll do more shells we're going to need another day, okay? We're going to need another half day to finish this section. You do have enough to do most of the homework tonight. I'll tell you what problems not to do. But there's one problem I really wanted to do before class ends. All right. It's a sphere, right? What, what's wrong? No? You know where I'm going? No. Oh, that's a sphere? What is the volume of a sphere? You can look it up, right? What's the volume of a sphere, according to your formula sheets? That's the formula of a sphere, of radius r, right? Give me a sphere of radius r, here's the, here's the formula, yeah? We trust this formula? We believe in it? Yes. Okay. Let's prove it. Let's prove this is, this is true. Let's see where this formula comes from. So the way I'm going to do this is to think about how could I create this object from doing a solid of revolution? What would I need to rotate around to get this object? Okay, around the x-axis, what am I rotating, though? What do you want me to rotate? Uh, Sine's not quite a circle, right? How about just a like a semicircle? Like, take a half circle, right, and rotate around the x-axis? And that would give me that, right, wouldn't it? You, know, you, you agree? If I, take, if I take a half circle and rotate that around the x-axis, the volume of that would be the volume of that ball, yes? Okay. What? You are okay with that? Okay, everyone got me? Okay, so if that's what I'm thinking I'm gonna do here, can somebody tell me what the equation of this circle is? If it's gonna have to have a radius of r, can you tell me what the equation of that circle is? What's the equation of a circle centered at the origin with radius r? x squared plus y squared equals r squared. That's the equation of a circle centered at the origin with the radius of r. 
Where do you get that from? Pre-Cal? I don't know. Pre-Cal? College algebra? Somewhere around there. I know my pre-Cal class, we did that in the, like the second week. We covered like s circles real quick. So it's been a while maybe. Do you all believe that? Do you all take that on faith? Yes? Okay, now, if I'm going to do this, that draws me the whole circle. The only way to do this is if I look at just the top of it and rotate just the top. So to, to get the top of this, um, I need to be able to somehow look at that as a function of x. So I need to solve it for y. So take that and solve for y here. So if I take the square root, you all see what I'm doing there? I'm just isolating the y. When I, take, when I get the x squared to the other side and I take square root, I have to do plus or minus. That's two different curves, right? The positive root draws me the top, and the negative root draws me the bottom. So they're two different functions. I'm only going to look at the top one, right? So what I'm looking at here is this function f of x equals square root of r squared minus x squared. Everyone, re just remember, r is a constant in the problem, right? r is just some fixed radius. So what I want to do is I want to take that picture, right, that graph, I want to look at it from where to where. Where am I going to wrap this thing? From, how do you want to do this? Yeah? Wouldn't it be negative r to r? Negative r to r, right? From negative r to r, we want to wrap that thing around, yes? Or could we do zero to r and just double our answer? I like that idea. How about, is that all right with you all? Let's look at this function. Let's look at it on the interval 0 to r. If we graph that, it's just the circle in the first quadrant. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap that around the x-axis, and then I'm going to double that answer, and that should give me this formula over here, right? Should give me this. All right, so if I want to wrap that around the x-axis, do y'all see the rectangle in there? Yes. Right, y'all see it? It's this, right there. Our axis of rotation is here, like that, right? We're wrapping. So we're going to use a washer, right? Over here, we have a rectangle. We need the outer and inner, right? So this, is, this up here, is the square root of r squared minus x squared. And the bottom function is 0, right? Because it's just the x-axis. So I need r out and r in. What's r out? It's just that, right? And r in is 0. So we have everything we need, don't we, for the formula? So far, this is working out pretty nice, I think. I hope you agree. The volume of that whole thing should be what goes in front of this integral. Two pi. Is it pi or 2 pi? What are we doing, washers or shells? We're doing washers. Washers is pi. Shells is 2 pi. Oh, we're going to double the answer at the end. I'll do that later. So if you're, yeah, you were already doubling it. I'm just, this is the volume of just this piece. We'll double this when we get done. OK, integral from? Well, where are we going from? We said 0 to r, right? 0 to r? 0 to r. All right, what are we integrating? r out squared, right? r out squared. So we have, here's r out, square root of r squared minus x squared. It's that squared minus the inner one, which is just 0 squared dx. Oh man, I'm so happy to see that squared. Aren't you happy to see that squared? If that squared wasn't there, would we, would we, would we be too afraid though? No, because that could probably go with what? Trig. Trig sub. Okay, but it's squared, thank goodness. So this becomes pi integral 0 to r. Then you square that, you just get r squared minus x squared. Right? That's all that's in there. Right? That's it. r is a constant. That means r squared is a constant, right? So the antiderivative now, ready for antiderivative. The pi is going to come for the ride. Okay, 
Antiderivative of r squared is? Careful, r is a constant. Careful, r squared x, r squared x. Just think of r squared, r is a constant, so just act like it's the number five. What would be the antiderivative of five? Five x, right? It's a constant. Minus, now this one, yes, one third x cubed. And then we're going to evaluate that from 0 to r. Equals. All right, we're going to plug in two things here. I'm going to put it over here. I'm going to plug in two things and subtract. What happens when I plug 0 in? 0 for x. Gone, right? Nothing. Now, what if I plug in r for x? Right, r for x. I will get pi. Okay, r here, r squared times r, r cubed. Minus, okay, r here, so r cubed, but then one third of it. So one third r cubed. It's kind of weird, like ignoring that it's not a variable and then seeing it's a constant and then putting it back as a variable. Well, it's, it's a variable, but it's, it's, it's a it's a variable only in the sense that we could change r here, right? But once we fix r, right, we fix it, it doesn't change, it's a constant, it's fixed, then this is going to be the formula that gives us the volume of that picture, right? But it's not x in the sense that, you know, we introduce the variable of x to draw the curve, right? So that as you move x, it draws the curve, and the curve depends on x. Uh, this is uh, what? What's uh, one, one r cubed minus one third r cubed? Two thirds r cubed? Two thirds. So this becomes pi times two thirds r cubed. Or if you want, you could write two thirds pi r cubed. That's our, that's our formula. I mean, that's our volume, right? But remember, this was only half of it, right? So if you take that and you multiply it by two, you get four thirds pi r cubed. Yeah. I mean, that's something you probably would have never thought you could do at this point, right? Like, verify that the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. That seems like a formula that just somebody else figured this out, right? Like, yeah, pretty awesome, right? Okay, so what about, we still have 10 minutes. What about this one? See if y'all can figure this out. Let's... <coughs> What's the volume of a right circular cone? So you look it up, right? The volume of that should be one third pi r squared times h. Oh, I forgot to label the height of the cone. So if you give me the height of a cone and you give me the radius of the bottom of the cone, the volume of it is one third pi r squared h. How would you prove it? So think about it for a minute, all right? I want you to think about it and see if someone can come up with what, how we can use what we learned today to figure that out. Raise your hand if you think you have an idea, whenever you have an idea. What I'm asking for is what do you rotate around what to figure, to figure out that shape? The last one we rotated like a semicircle around the x-axis, right? What do you rotate around what to get that? Go ahead. Could you rotate a triangle around the y-axis? A triangle. What were you going to say? Like Something like that. Like a triangle around the x-axis? You want to go around the x-axis? It doesn't matter to me. We can go around the x or y. Let's go with x. Is that okay? I agree triangle, but does it really need to be a triangle? What is it really, though? It's just a linear function. It's just a line segment is really what it is. So watch. I'm going to do this. I'm going to draw the function. Right there. What do you get if you rotate that around the x-axis? A cone, right? Now, I have it sideways. That's OK, right? 
Can anybody tell me the coordinates of that point right there? Zero, zero. Now, why am I getting the coordinates? I'm getting the coordinates of this point because I actually need to know what this linear function is, right? I need to know what draws that line. So I need the equation of that line. So in order to find the equation of a line, I just need two points. I know one of them is 0, 0. What's the, what are the coordinates of this point? This is the tricky one. Not tricky, but what do you got? H comma R. H comma R? What do you all think? Right? Here's our x-axis. We're looking at this sideways, right? So that distance right here is R. That would be our y coordinate. And then distance from here to here would be our H. So this is H, and that's R. If you have two points on a line, how do you find the equation? If you have two points, you need the slope first, right? So what's the slope of that line? Let's, let's write it down. The slope of that line is rise over run. Or you, R over H. R, it's R minus 0 over H minus 0. You're doing the, this Y coordinate minus that Y coordinate over this X coordinate minus this X coordinate, and you get, you get just R over H. Right? So that's the slope of that line. By the way, I should point out again, R and H are constants, right? R and H are just numbers. Someone's going to give me R, someone's going to give me H, and then I should be able to give you the volume. So the slope is that. Once you have the slope, you can use this formula from Cal 1 and college algebra. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. That's our generic formula for the equation of a line. And I know the slope. And I actually know one of the points, don't I? Which one should I use, 0, 0, or the other one, HR? Let's use 0, 0. It's much cleaner, right? If I just replace that with 0, I get Y equals then the slope, which we know is r over h. And then this, x minus 0 is just this. Hey, that's the function right there. That is the equation of that line. So I can look at this as y equals r over h x. And I'm going to wrap it around the x-axis. Yeah? If I wrap it around the x-axis, then I'm going to use a vertical rectangle, right? The top of that ver vertical rectangle is that curve, and the bottom is 0. So r out is that, and r in is 0. And my limits of integration go from where? 0 to h, right? Because that's the x-coordinate. So I should be able to set the whole integral up right now. The volume should be pi, because I'm using washers, integral 0 to h. And then I have outer, outer radius squared minus inner radius squared dx. OK, outer radius was what? This thing right here, right? This thing. So r over h times x squared, and then this inner one was 0. When I square r over h x, right, when I square that r over h x, the r gets squared, the h gets squared, right, and the x gets, x gets squared. Yeah. But the r squared and the h squared are constants that can come out of this completely, can't they? So look at my next line. Pi, I have an r squared over h squared that came out. I have integral 0 to h, and then on the inside I have x squared dx because this was gone, right? You feel like integrating that? That's not bad, right? One third, hey, we were gonna get a one third, weren't we? Somewhere, and one third was gonna come out. So we have pi times r squared over h squared times the antiderivative, which is one third x cubed, evaluated zero to h. Do you all see it? See what happens when we plug? Well, what happens when we plug in 0? It's going to go away. So all I really have to do is plug in h for x. 
So this will be pi times r squared over h squared times one third times h cubed. And the h cubed and h squareds kind of reduce out, and you're finally left with pi r squared h. Uh, one third. Oops, I got the one third. One third pi r squared h. You like? All right, so I'm going to give you a quiz problem for a take home due a week from today. Okay. Quiz um, due, what's a week from today? The 26th? Now look, I realize you can just go on the internet and probably find this, okay? What I would like for you to do is sit down with classmates, right, and see if you can figure this out. It's, this is not like a hard quiz. I'm not trying to push you like beyond the limits of what I think you can do, because I think I've set up everything you need for this. I would like to see if you can figure out, using what we've learned today, the formula for the volume of a frustrum, which is basically this shape right here. It's a cone where you've cut the top of it off. So you've come in here and you've just like cut off the top and you get this shape, it's almost like a thimble. And when you have that shape, you, you have some height here. You have on top, I'll call that R1, which is like the radius of the top of it. And on the bottom you have R2. And so the volume of this, you could look it up, but I want you to see if you can can show me with calculus what the volume of that is. All right? Um, I, what? Can you spell the shape? No. <laughs> All you really have to do in this is figure out what you're rotating around, and it's very similar to the cone. There's, it's not as easy as the cone, but it's, it's doable. All right? I wouldn't be asking if I didn't feel like it was doable. So what part of the uh, math homework? OK, yeah. So then in terms of the homework, thank you for reminding me. In terms of the homework, um, for 7.2, it says 1 through 19 odd, and then 38 and 39. Uh, don't do 38 or 39 yet, OK? Just try the first 19 odd. The first 19 odd are all problems where you're taking some region and rotating it around some axis. All right? Yeah, that's it. And then this, like I said, don't go see if you can figure out how to find the answer somewhere. I want you to sit down with this. Think of, think of this problem. This problem right here is really a template on how to get this one going. All right, everybody have a good weekend already? Gee.